Hi, right, good evening. Welcome to the July 9, 2024 meeting of the Quantic Township Council. Not that it makes a difference. Sorry. It's March. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the township clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the suburban trends and daily record newspapers, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with township policy. Very well said. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious Providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding, so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all of the people of the Quantic Township. Amen. 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 All right. Will Carol, the clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Dreesey? Present. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mrs. Russell? Here. Mayor Heard. Clearly, I am here. All right. There are no presentations scheduled. Are there any reports from comments from volunteers? Nope. Public comment. Next on the agenda is public comment. Public comment period is limited to a total of 30 minutes. Additional period for public comment is reserved later in this meeting. We welcome comments, suggestions, and questions during the public comment period. However, the purpose of this is to allow public comment not to engage in dialogue. If you have a specific question, please feel free to pose it and then follow up with staff via telephone or email. As a reminder, comments are limited to three minutes. If anybody wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come to the microphone and provide your name for the record. Ben? Yes, sir. All right, good answer. <laughs> there being no additional comments, we will continue on. Mr. Manager. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, three quick items within my written report. Good the evening. first is as a result of some conversation at the last council meeting, there was concern expressed regarding initiatives and activities for pedestrian and bike safety. Followed up with the chief of police, uh, who talked to the special services bureau, formerly the traffic bureau. Sergeant Chiquetti heads that up for us, who provided an enumerated list of activities that had recently uh, taken place or will be taking place now, maybe in the past. So I thank the department for their efforts on those subjects. They will continue as we move forward. Uh, the 2024 Historic Preservation Grant Applications to the County of Morris, positive news. The uh, Historic Preservation Trust Fund Board made a recommendation to the commissioners that both of our applications be funded in full. That's awesome. On, uh, the Martin Berry House Landscaping Plan and the other, the train station. Excellent. Um, and as the council may recall, the train station was a redo because of the bid results we received last or this past February. They were significantly in excess of the allowable budget. So the uh, county commissioners will be acting upon those potential applications tomorrow evening. And then lastly, we had an Eagle Scout reach out to staff in Public Works regarding a project to relocate the dog park. I know this has been the subject of discussion with the council in the past, so I wanted to take the council's temperature on this. The proposal would be to relocate it to Lyman Park. That's interesting. Well, That's actually a nice little park. What's currently there? Nothing. Playground. Isn't there, yeah, there's a playground. Isn't there a playground there? I thought there was a playground there. There is. It's there is. an older playground, but otherwise it's a big open. Would it still be there? Would we keep the playground yes. there too? Yeah, okay. we wouldn't. We wouldn't lose anything. Is it oh, big enough? Room. It's definitely big enough. And okay. Does that, that part look? <laughs> yes. I'm sure it does. Only when it's really bad, though. It, it hasn't flooded it, with the recent events. It absolutely flooded during the rain. Yeah. The only thing that I would say is we had currently have stone or pea gravel at this one. Yes. And that, you know, it hurts their feet. feet you know, it's stuck in their paws. And, you know, yeah. yeah, the fence that was installed in the current one isn't optimal for the use of a dog park either because they can get underneath it and dig. So I think there's a lot of things that we learned from that experience that we would mm -hmm. do differently. Okay. Uh, but unless there's an objection to the council, we'll talk to the scout, let author him, authorize uh, him to proceed. Proceed, and ultimately, I'll ask for a presentation to be made when he gets to the point. I'm fine with it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I was just going to say, being that it's an Eagle Scout project, I mean, I guess he's only going to be able to do so much, and then the well, town might have to help. approve it. We, we like yeah. to partner to make it, right. you know, okay. much like we had with good. the young man who did the, the bicycle Perfect. Um, right. station over by PV Park. We'll work with We got the concrete and poured it and then helped good. him anchor it, and then he built it with yeah. fundraise. So Great. working together, you get a lot more than working. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. 
Thank you for that. Other, otherwise, unless there's any questions, that concludes my report. Excellent. Thank you. I can flip the page. I can tell you what's next. All right. There are no public hearings scheduled for this event. There are no ordinances for approval. Next on the agenda is resolutions. Miss March. In with resolution R-2024-149, rescinding the Parks and Recreation Petty Cash Fund. 150, certifying that the members of the governing body have reviewed the annual report of audit for the year 2023. R-2024-151, approving the corrective action plan for the 2023 municipal audit. 152, canceling grant fund balances. 153, authorizing the discretion of award of a contract for the liner for the Greenview Park Pond Lining Project to Matina and Son Incorporated in the amount of $31,452. And R-2024-154, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth in the July 5th, 2024 bill list and 2018 FEMA elevation escrow list. Thank you. Are there any comments on the resolutions from council? I just have one on 153. I know that the bids came in much higher than what were allowed. So now are we doing it 100% just buying the liner? We, yeah, we've created essentially an in-house project. The challenge with the liner is the liner companies wouldn't sell directly to the township. Huh. So we had to solicit quotes from three contractors to find a, a contractor who would procure it on the township's but, but it's coming in under the grant money, so it's fully covered. The grant money was for 60000 We also have 90000 uh, in the capital budget, so this would be within the sixty. Gotcha. Okay. Is he uh, like giving us guidance or? He, he, he's just buying it and... Uh, Okay, and dropping we'll it, it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Here, it goes under the water. There you go. Because well, the, all the dirt stuck out because I see a lot of trucks going back and forth. Yeah. And yeah. The, the 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 sports court has been cleared and prepped. This is now a, a larger hole in the ground in which there is currently no water, so that's underway. And then that's saw a, the heavy equipment. How much outside, deeper so is it? It's not. I don't think they're making it much deeper. I think we're just making it so it doesn't leak. Be good to get that done. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and credit to the team for being creative in a way to accomplish it within budget. Yeah, that was awesome. great. All right, any other questions? Nope. Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'll, I'll make, make a motion to adopt R2024-149 through R2024-154. I a second. Roll call. Mr. Dreesey? Yes. Mrs. Lawrence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Russell? Yes. Mayor Hurd? Yes. All right, there are no items listed for discussion. There are no reports and notices. This is beautiful. All right, council reports. Next on agenda is council report. Councilman Dreesey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, none of my committees met. Historic committee is meeting tomorrow since last Wednesday. The first Wednesday was kind of like the day before 4th of July, and nobody was going to show up, so they moved it, which was a good idea. Um, I'm glad we got the, the approval for the grants for the train station. Um, and the other one, that's good. Get that moving along. Um, nice job on the audit. It was no major issues, so beautiful. Thank, thank you to the town. Thank you to everybody involved with the finance side of things for getting keeping that done. Um, I did have a question. Why why aren't you allowed to paddleboard on Woodland Lake? So I'm like, I don't know. I'll find out. So that's a question. Yeah, that's, kind of, that's come up before. Yeah, that's Correct. That's come up a number of times. Why? Because you can't subject. swim in it? Is that the deal? Correct. And the, the issue became the separation, and it was it gotcha. debated by the Parks and Recreation Committee that came up with the recommendation that okay. was followed through. Just, yes, a lot of snapping turtles right. in there. I wouldn't think that was a Figure good idea. Figure that out. I wouldn't think anyone. Just stay on the board. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. And just, uh, it's hot out, drink a lot of water. Mm. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you, sir. Wonderful as usual. Next, Councilwoman Florence Lynch. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, first, I wanted to start with, I was contacted by uh, the First Reformed Church regarding uh, the Community Disaster Relief Fund that was set up following Hurricane Irene back in 2011. Uh, There's a balance of $6,813.57 in the account that town residents gave to the church, and that was for the effort, you know, for the, that effort. Uh, and because the church was the central point of the recovery resources and aid to the township residents, that's why it went to the church. Um, and the money was only to be exclusively used for recovery needs and they kept it, assuming there would be another major flood. 
it still could happen, although it hasn't, knock, knock on wood. Um, and it was never considered the church's money, but they were holding it for the township. So the church wants to make sure, number one, that the township's aware these funds are being held. They also want to know if uh, we want to create a disaster relief account and take ownership of the funds, but they're fine with keeping the funds um, and leave it in their hands. I prefer um, to keep it in their hands. And if we accept it, though, we can either do like a dedicate. Uh, I had talked to the manager about this. He said we can either do a like a dedication by rider um, for this and limit it to the flood uh, response, or you can use it as a broader storm relief fund but that's a broader use so I mean they just want to know we need to know what the council wants I thought maybe just leave it in their hands sounds like a plan to me and wondered what everybody Second else that. thought yeah as long as it's in an interest bearing account that would be fine yeah, I couldn't tell you what kind of account it's in, but I'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want it just sitting there. You want it to gain a little bit of interest now that there's John, do you agree with it? Do you want money? it to stay there? Yeah, I'm good. I trust the church. Yeah. All right, so we don't have Can't to do anything else with that. All right, so that's it. I was told just to bring it up in the report. Okay. Um, the Senior Advisory Committee met. They are organizing a bus trip uh, for Paquanic seniors to attend a Christmas show at the Hunterton Hills Playhouse. The date's been set for Tuesday, November 12th. The bus leaves Town Hall at 9.30 and will depart the Playhouse at the end of the show. Tickets are $80 and do include the bus trip, the show, uh, and entree, dessert table, coffee and tea. And the committee is working with Parks and Rec and finalizing the details, which will be advertised soon. So look for more information from Parks and Rec on that. Um, and, and this event, yeah, I guess we'll have to get that clarification on <laughs> senior it age. Yeah. It is just Pequonic residents because it's partially being funded by the town from the Senior Citizen Advisory Budget. Um, Economic Development Advisory Committee, they did not meet in June. However, the committee did finalize a survey that was being shared with uh, Adam, the town manager, for approval. Did you get to review that yet or not yet? I have not seen the survey yet. You have not? All right, because he was supposed to, uh, the chair was supposed to send it to you. So I'll follow up on that. Um, don't forget, there'll be a true, a uh, true, a food truck festival at PV Park this Saturday, July 13th, from 11 to 5. And then finally, on another note, I just wanted uh, everyone to continue to pray for Cadence DeBeese and her family. I'm sure everyone knows by now the horrible accident that she was in, and I can't stop thinking about it. And uh, I talked to her dad today. He said it was another tough day, but she'll get through it. So uh, they, the family just thanks everybody for their support. The community really rallied together. They're doing meal trains. They're doing donations. So you can find that information on Facebook or reach out to any one of us and we can put you in touch with with who to donate to. So that's it. Thank you, Councilwoman. Next up, Councilman Cole. All right, thank you, Mayor. Just a thought, and I don't know if it could happen, is the well near the current dog park? Is there any chance that we could turn that on at night and most people water their lawns at night? No. No. Yeah, I'm just trying to think <laughs> something, some way to get the water to go down there. It's maybe like a big straw. Maybe. Yeah. You know, no, no, unfortunately, the, no, the water quality would we would immediately be in violation. Okay. Um, another thing that I thought of um, with all of the recent power outages we've had, and I sit, you know sit there while I'm working and I listen to the scanner. You know, DPW, we need stop signs. There are some towns that have stop signs at traffic lights. They're folded in half with a hinge, and when it's needed, all the stop sign is is flipped up. Uh, rather than going to DPW, getting signs, having somebody from DPW go out at 10 o'clock at night, we need stop signs. Just a thought. I mean, all, you all seen of our intersections, all the stoplights that are municipal are controlled via generator. Yeah, I don't, I don't know because uh, there was one the other day, the Boulevard and something. 
I, I, I'll happily yeah. follow up with the staff and mention yeah, it as because an Because I heard on the radio that I know, they were asking for stop signs. I know during one of the recent uh, issues we discussed it, and every one of them can be powered by a backup generator. So. Okay, because they were asking for DPW to bring out stop signs. And maybe there was an yeah. issue somewhere with a tie-in, I don't know. But they, uh, that was solved many years ago yeah. to, to the benefit of the community. Now, is it a generator that needs to go out? Or yeah, yes, they have to just a little, yeah. they drop it and okay. fire it up. Um, the Pequannock Mini Mall, the sidewalk, there was a telephone pole that went down there. There's been a piece of plywood covering a hole probably four to six months. I don't know whose responsibility it is. Is it the counties? Is it JCP&L? Because they had to dig it up for the new pole, but it's unsightly and probably dangerous. Uh, so I was wondering if we could maybe possibly look into that. Do you have an address? Uh, I don't know. It's the, right across from Jersey Johnny's. Okay. Thank you. And the, the second, the last thing was, what's going on with the equipment on the side of this building? Tomorrow they're tying us into the sewer. Huh. Ah. Where? Out there. I know, so <laughs> we've never been on the sewer? Correct. I thought we did something when we did the village. The senior house is connected and there's a manhole uh, to the north of the building. But tomorrow they will be digging and connecting this building into the, okay. into the sewer. All right. Where's our septic? Somewhere back over there. there. <laughs> <laughs> over, over by where the pipes are now. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's over in the side. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Oh, it was great reading the audit, too. Very interesting. <laughs> that was a wonderful audit. Pure what a page turner, huh? <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. My open space committee did not meet. The rescue squad did. Kyle or no? Oh, Kyle. He I just forget about time. her. From now on, I'm going first. <laughs> Councilwoman Russell, please. <laughs> uh, the library meeting is uh, next week, uh, one week from tomorrow. We have an interim director, Susan, who's doing a great job. Everything's going well. Their summer reading program is amazing. I know we spoke about filling the potholes. They Hopefully they'll get done soon. I realize DPW has been super busy with all the accidents and the power outages and stuff, but that would be great to get those done. Um, our planning board didn't meet. They meet on the... Are we still meeting on the 15th, Dave? As far as I know, yes. Thanks. Just for that one with a quick meeting yeah. on the 15th. <laughs> I know. Environmental meets tomorrow at 7.30. Um, my county meeting with the Preservation Trust Fund, we're trying to figure out a date. We haven't met uh, this summer yet, but we're hoping to meet in August or September. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you very much. All right. As I said, my open space did not meet. Uh, first aid squad, we have a total of 116 calls uh, for last month. 33 were for Cedar Crest Village, two to Wayne, one Riverdale, one Pompton Lakes. Uh, and year to date, it's interesting. January to June total calls. In 2022, there's 467. 23, there was 521. And 24, there's 580. So, wow. yeah, we're trending up. Are they getting a lot of calls? I'm sorry. Are they getting a lot of calls with this heat for the seniors? I presume so, yeah. I would yeah. guess that they were up there when the power went out at Cedar Crest with. Yeah, but everybody. the power came back pretty quick okay. up to Cedar Crest. You know, my son actually got the text because he works up there. And they were talking about how it went out and then a text not too long afterwards. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, question. Just with these hot running days on the rail trail. You know that wonderful bottle filling station that we have over at Greenview? Yes. Any chance of putting one of them either like by the train station or PV Park? There would be a significant expense as there's no infrastructure. Oh, really? I you figured the train main. station has water, a water main. Well, you got to run water. So you got to yeah. dig and run water. That's why I figured and, with the train station. With respect station. to the um, proximity to the trail, it, it would have to be on municipal property if it's ours. If there was a way to do it, I'd really appreciate it because it was really hot out there this morning. <laughs> I can put it in the idea hopper for capital discussion. That'd be great. Isn't the one at Greenview uh, not Maybe working that could because be a it was So we relocated the one at Greenview from a freestanding setup to being on a building, and we've had more success with it on the building. Okay. Yeah. It has been subject to less. Other than that, uh, I'm going to echo what Melissa said. You know, praise for Candace, or Cadence, Devise. 
it just goes to show, you know, at any time in a second, the life can change. Uh, she's very, very lucky. I talked to Greg, um, but nobody ever wants that to happen to any one of our kids. That is the worst possible call you could ever get. Um, and I just, I, I hope everything goes good for her. She has a big uphill battle. And uh, we are definitely praying for her. And I want to see that happen to anybody in Pequonic, especially younger or really anywhere. So that's all I have to say. Good luck. And uh, we'll be praying for you. Next, on the agenda is public comment. As a reminder, we welcome comments, suggestions, and questions rather than dialogue during the public comment period. And comments are limited to three minutes. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come to the microphone and provide your name for the record. But hey, who's first? <coughs> all right. Hey, thanks, Vinny Syracuse of Pumpkin Plains. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you all for what you're doing. Have a safe summer. Uh, but secondly, uh, Mr. Brewer, thanks for um, for bringing to light your discussion with Sergeant Chiquetti. Um, those initiatives were definitely with, uh, with the pedestrian and bicycle safety. Um, it was definitely evident in the last couple of weeks with the uh, the digital uh, speeding sign that was uh, on the turnpike. And I've also seen more uh, police officers doing uh, stationary radar around the town um, and, you know, in uh, decisive locations. So I just wanted to, uh, to thank you for following up with that. I appreciate it. I know it was a point of discussion at the last meeting. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thank you. And we have to have people start paying more attention when they're driving and stop going around cars when they've got the flashers on. Yeah, and they got the flashers on. It's ridiculous. Too, so yeah. it's, uh, definitely your attention. Thank you. Sir. Come on up. <clears throat> Patty Horstein. Um, one on the Senior Center Christmas show, I guess it is. Um, my mother went on it last year with another one of her friends. My mother is nine, at the time was 91 and partly blind. They said buses are going to start lining up, filling up at 9.15. We got there at 9.15, the bus was completely filled. My mother being partly blind was told to walk to the end of the bus. Her friend who needs a cane was told to do the same. Yes, I get it's for senior citizens, but it was the worst trip in the world. Neither one of them got to enjoy it. They couldn't, they struggled to get off the bus, and you had people 59 years old, 60 years old, sitting in the front of the bus and refused to move for handicapped people. And I had said, can you please make sure on the way back these two handicapped people are in the front of the bus. She's blind and she can't walk. And reality was, they didn't. And these people at 59 years of age, oh, I needed to sit next to my mother. But you could freaking walk. And these two old ladies, they'll never go on another senior trip again. And as much as it's supposed to be for Pequonic residents, that senior housing, senior center, is open to the public. So you have non-Pequonic residents being part of TRIPS, using the house, and if it's our taxpayers' money that is supporting that Pequonic senior citizen housing, I'm sorry, nobody from, if you're not a resident of this Pequonic, I don't care if you were a resident four years ago, two years ago, you moved out of this town, you lose the privilege. It should be only for the residents. We should make sure of that. So that's issue number one. Issue number two, and it's maybe more for Adam, West Franklin, across from Our Lady of Fatima, I believe that's the name of the church. It is getting awfully hard to drive down West Franklin from the turnpike to the boulevard because cars are parking more now than more than ever on both sides of that street. And only one car can go down it. And then what if you do it on a Sunday? You're trying to make a turn. You can't make the right-hand turn onto, the, onto that road because you got to worry about the cars coming up West Franklin. And then you have the house on the corner, uh, the, the blue house, and I don't know the name of it, with the dog next to the empty parking lot that they park their car, and they're within their rights, they park it within you know, 20 feet of the stop sign, but if you have a car there, and then you have a car on the other side, you can't have two cars go by. 
maybe we can try to put in a rule that only one side of that street can have cars being parked and make it the side that Lady of Fatima is on so people can go up and down that street because it's too difficult if you live anywhere near the Greenview area or anywhere where you've got to go from the turnpike to the boulevard. That is just an awful street to try to have two cars go down when cars are on both sides of the street. And as I said, in Sundays it's even worse. That's it. Anybody else? Elaine Baccarelli. Um, I just have a question about trees that I've donated in the name of someone who passed. Um, I know two of my trees, I did talk to Dave, actually, I emailed him about two trees that were taken down at Greenview Park by the tennis courts. We had four originally, but two were gone. And I did ask him, you know, um, what was the reason that they were taken down? And he came back saying that they were, it was for safety reasons. So I got back to him and I said, well, I know I let you know that they had some kind of disease. It was kind of like a gel that was gomosis or something like that going on with the tree, some kind of gel about two years ago. And I never, I never got a response from that. So anyway, I did ask him, was it, were they diseased? Was it because of sports? You know, maybe they were going to do some soccer practicing back there or the hay wagon goes back there, you know. And she never replied back to me. The other question I said in that same email, well, since they're gone, they're only there, I know time seems to escape me, but when they started the program, so I don't know how many years ago that was, maybe six years, seven, I did say, can the town consider planting two trees in my friend's name elsewhere? I don't care where. And I never got a response from that. I have to say, between myself and my, my other friend, we've had other friends that bought eight trees in this town in memory of other people. And there were other people that I really would have bought trees for, that I could have gotten friends to. It was, there were $250 a tree. I would have bought trees for, but I felt disheartened that trees were destroyed from you know deer rubbings and other things. They just didn't feel that they were taking care of. I just didn't bother buying anymore. So I don't know what the situation is with the donated trees. I know they're not there forever, but I would think if I'm asking for two trees that were taken down, that I don't even know why, for safety reasons, what does that mean? I don't know where the town stands. John, you're with the Shade Tree Commission. What do you think? Well, I, I, honestly, it's news to me that trees were donated and planted. I was not aware of that. I mean, I thought it was a, I mean, it would be a good idea. Okay, so Carol, how long is this program? It's really not a question and answer. No, I'm just Carol, so. you know that's about this program, right? Sorry, I'd answer. Town manager? Bye -bye. No. no worries. <laughs> no, town, I'm sorry, town manager? No, you don't know how long this has been in program? Elaine, I'm not allowed to answer. Yeah, it's you not know. a back and forth. And sometimes you do say questions and answers, not just... Uh, actually, comments. earlier, at the end. You used to, yeah. sometimes you say comments and questions. No, I Other say the same thing every single time, but in the, the first one, it's a longer paragraph explaining everything about the open comment period. Okay. No one knows that so. this is a gifting program. We had benches, too, but they got too expensive and we stopped that. Mm -hmm. Pick up a brochure at the Parks and Rec, but anyway. I'm going to reach out to Dave again, yeah. see what the situation is. I kind of go nowhere. And the other one is, um, I don't know if you guys read the, the record today. There was a reporter that did a report about what's going on with the library. A big two-page article. Or, well, actually I got two pages sent to me. No? Anybody read that? I heard about record? it, but I didn't get to read it. Yeah, well, I think you should. I think it's embarrassing for this town. I think you should read it and try to make a decision as to what you're going to do going forward. Because those council, those uh, trustee meetings are packed houses now. If you haven't been there, they're packed houses. Usually no one goes, but there's a reason. So try to pay attention and uh, you know maybe come up with a solution that will satisfy most people. Because I think there is a solution, but you have to be able to make that solution. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Come on up. 
Good evening, Council. Sharon Taylor, Pompton Plains. How are you? Hello. Hey, Sharon. Um, not really questions. I just want to thank the DPW um, and Police Department the week prior with all the storms and a lot of the chaos going on. Um, it was great to see them riding around helping people. I know Boulevard in Jacksonville went through a, a bit of a yeah. difficult issue with trees coming down. And um, just thank you for them uh, taking care of our neighborhood and helping people out. And just reminding to uh, let the neighbors check on each other as well. Um, hopefully we don't have too many storms in the future. And also I read the manager's report and thank you to the police department for following up on the bike safety. I know that sometimes um, I could come up and repeat myself but it's just because I care about the kids in the neighborhood and I just want to make sure that we advocate for their safety and making sure that that they're in a safe neighborhood and that they're following what they need to do when they're riding their bikes and, and the drivers as well in the township. So thank you to them for following up with how they advocate for the township. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on up. <laughs> Mary Kay Schwerman. It's funny you uh, brought this up because I have copies of the daily records uh, report that I thought you all might like to see because it is very interesting. It's upsetting and it's something that really has to be solved. And I was interested, Kyle said that the potholes in the library parking lot are going to be built. I just hadn't heard that and I'd like to know what's going on there. That's great. So um, I was at the library today and it is an exciting place to be, uh, the kids and the big logos and one thing I think you all should uh, go see if you have time. In the children's section of the library, the staff, the younger staff of the library has made this airplane and they've hung it from the, it looks like an old World War II airplane, and they've hung it from the ceiling. So if you have time to go see this creativity that goes on in our library, it would be great. But um, may I pass out these? Yeah, you can hand them to Carol. <coughs> you can pass them out. Thank you. Usually when I do a scan, I can't see it. Please stand close. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Are we going to try to Me answer up. some at the end? Once we finish. Okay. Is that it, ma'am? Mrs. Schmerman, was that it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. No, okay. <laughs> I didn't want to cut you off early, so. Okay, thank you very much. Um, are there any comments from council based on the questions? Adam, did you want to answer anything? Or? I'll defer to council first and then I have a okay. couple. Melissa? Yeah, I just want to make a couple of comments on, um, I guess it was uh, Patty that was up first talking about the seniors. I think that um, we do have to clarify age, right? Do we know what the age is for the senior trip? We, we want to clarify what's considered a senior because the town considers it, I think. It, it's, it's the senior group's initiative, so I would defer to okay. them to define right. it. And, then and, and we'll also try to address, um, you know, if somebody's disabled and also making sure that just Bequanic residents register for this. Um, there will be a limit to the number of people, but they can't oversell. I'm sorry that your mom went through that last year and her friend, but we'll, I'll try to do everything I can to make sure that uh, we address that. And then, um, what else did I want to comment to? And then um, also, I, Elaine was talking about the trees, and I do, I am familiar with that program, which I believe was always run by Parks and Rec. Well, Wasn't it? Said whenever I address, yeah, okay. Again, it's, again, we it's don't want to go that. back and forth. Yeah. But that's something I think you know we do need just to uh, make sure we understand that process and and put it out there for people. Right. And that's it. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Anything? Uh, Bob, I'd, I'd like to maybe you know offline we'll get some clarification on this library thing because yeah. we were originally told 
They weren't allowed to keep excess funds. Then we were told they were allowed to keep excess funds if they put it in a capital campaign account, a capital improvement account. So, I mean. Well, the, the state law is very clear. Yeah. They, they get X amount of money. Uh, I know they, they use what they want keep 20% and and then the rest goes back. However, if you have valid use for it in a capital fund, you can transfer it over with a capital fund. You can't just turn around and give money back. In fact, the only time money has been given back was in 2022, which was voted on unanimously by the board, which Joyce Foldmuller was a part of. There is no money going back. I don't even know that there's any money to go back this year right now. We were just looking over the stuff. So, but it is a state law that it goes back. It's not people randomly grabbing money that the library desperately needs. It's a state law that it goes back unless they put it in a capital. Correct. But they can't just throw, they're not supposed to just throw it in that capital improvement. You have to use it for something. It's a very, it's a very specific process. You have to show your budget along with the money used, along with your capital budget and your, your master plan for your capital budget. That all has to go to the state librarian and be approved. It isn't done, oh yeah, let's just take this money and throw it back. So could and then it be goes, future projects? There could be future projects if, if you need them. You know, not just saying, oh, we're gonna put on, we're gonna add a 2,000 square foot addition that you're really not going to do. And I believe the first time that we noticed this, they did not have a capital, can't, a capital improvement fund. There, there was a lot. We still do, our capital plan is funded right now through 2000. But the money is in a separate seven. account now it's, where it's it wasn't a, before. It's right. right, it's in a capital improvement fund. And right now it's fully funded through 2028, I believe. Now things are being done, right? Yeah, and now we're, we're getting stuff done. We're getting that done. The, lot, the parking lot's going to be done. Just put um, a new roof on. We just put a new roof on. We're going to be doing the additions. Um, a lot of the things in this article are false um, that she wrote. Um, the um, It said two of the recent appointed trustees are married to candidates who were endorsed by Moms for Liberty. That's not true. Christina White's husband was not endorsed by Moms for Liberty. It also said we had an $800,000 budget. We have a $1.1 million budget. Um, Ms. White never said when can we give the money back. Um, we've always thought that we didn't have money to give back to move over. And that's what we're seeing now. We just ordered an audit because when we were looking at the, the monies, we're trying to figure out what's going on right now. So we've ordered a full audit Good. for this year. All right. John, anything? To be done. All right. Nope. Well, but thank no, you very much. There's, there's no money sense. going back this year. There's no money being stolen from the library. I hope there's no and, money being stolen. And when from people the go around and spread these lies, um, we're trying to find a new director for the library. And people are reading this, and are we going to get a really good candidate? No. Who are we going to get? We're going to get just the people you don't want. You're going to get far right candidates that think we're some far right lunatics. Yep. And we're not going to get a good person to run our library, and that's what we want. We want somebody who's gonna run the library, not with the vision of Debbie Maynard, who left to go work somebody else, but the vision of the people in Baquanic, because that's who the library serves. And they do a darn good job serving the people, and they've actually done more money. Instead of taking that money, and this is what we said, instead of taking the money and putting it over into capital improvements, we don't need this, that, and the other thing. Do more projects, do more, look at all the stuff we're doing now. They're, they're doing some fabulous stuff with, with community borrowing, such as like a blow up outdoor screen. Yeah. Like just cool stuff that they're doing and it's all stuff by, don't just take money and hide it. Use the money, use it for the people of Aquatic and that's what we've said all along and it's finally getting used and it's a good thing to and say. And we're not kicking out our kids anymore. And we're not kicking out kids out of the library anymore. That always blew me away. Why would a library be kicking out kids? That's absolutely irresponsible. We welcome them. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Brewer, did you have any responses? Uh, thank you, Mary. I just wanted to comment with respect to the concerns about West Franklin. I'll talk to the police department and the engineering department to take a look at it and see what uh, would be best recommended if there were to be a change 
change to legislative change, the council would have to adopt an ordinance to create a no parking dining. So I'll, I'll pass back to them to do a, a study in time. Um, and then with respect to uh, public works director, I'll follow him and share the comments made and ask the response. Thank you. Thank you. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. All right, thank you. Next on the agenda is minutes for approval. June 11th, 2024. Miss Russell, you have to abstain. And June 25th, I and Mr. DeRisi have to abstain. Are there any comments? Moving noted. <laughs> no comments. Is there a motion? <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve June 11th and June 25th. Can I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Opposed? Just the one. Abstain from the 11th. What he said. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, closed session. There is a closed session. We do have to go over two things. And I don't have all the information on that, but we'll be talking about them, and we'll talk about that when we come back into open session. Is there a resolution? That's my mistake, that there will be approving a resolution um, so is that kind of authorizing contract negotiations. Negotiation. Session for the purpose yes. of contract negotiation, shared services, Lincoln Park, contract negotiation, shared services, for Clank Downs, Blackburn. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We're going in the Wait, I need a motion. I'll Nothing. make a motion. I'll, I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. Now thank you everybody. <laughs>